friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. We're back in the kitchen today and we are talking food storage, specifically four ways to keep pests out of your food storage or let's kill them, nip it in the bud. If they were to accidentally get into your food storage, let's make sure they don't completely ruin the food. So the first and foremost is gonna be deplete the oxygen. If you can get the oxygen or remove a bug's oxygen source, they can't breathe, they die, they can't live. So this is the number one thing. I have an oxygen absorber here. I always struggle saying that word. And you can just plop this into a mason jar or uh, some other kind of completely closed container that has a virtually airtight seal. Or if you don't wanna use the oxygen absorbers, if you don't wanna add that, uh, add that cost or that recurring cost, then what you can do is you can invest in a jar sealer or a vacuum sealer machine and some sort of way to vacuum seal it. This is a brake bleeder pump. We have a whole video on how to vacuum seal mason jars, I think three or four different ways, and I will link that above, and you can check that out if you're interested. But if an item can be vacuum sealed, that's the option that you're gonna wanna go to that will be, because then you don't have to do any of these other ones. All these other options aren't even, don't even have to be, um, you don't even have to be concerned with if you can eliminate the oxygen. So let me set those aside real quick. The second way is freezing. I just have an ice cube tray to represent that and to remind me, um, but this is mostly for flour. So flour, all grains actually, are very, very prone to pantry moth larvae being laid, like their eggs being laid in the grain and we can't really see them with the naked eye. So we can purchase it from the store. It can be loaded with those microscopic eggs that we can't see and then we can put them in our pantry and weeks later they can hatch and we have a pantry moth infestation on our hands and it's terrible and you don't want to experience it and this is one way that I learned that because when it happened to me I went on the internet searching 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 how can I make sure this never happens again and freezing it before you put it away into your pantry is the answer for flour. I have only ever frozen flour because I'm concerned about the condensation issue and the moisture issue with things like pasta. Um, with, with flour, it hasn't been an issue at all. What I do is I will take the flour as soon as I purchase it from the store, I'll put it in the freezer for 24 to 48 hours, and then I will set it out on my counter for another 24 to 48 hours to make sure that it completely thaws and is completely dry before I package it and put it into my pantry. I have read where people have successfully done that with things like beans and pasta, um, but I just, seeing condensation and knowing the moisture levels of my freezer, um, I haven't personally been comfortable with that. So freezing for flour is a way to kill off all those pantry moth larvae that we can't see with the naked eye so that they won't ever hatch and ruin our flour. Okay, number three is bay leaves. Another way to prevent pests is to uh, mess up their senses, right? Mess up their sense of smell and their ability to be attracted to your food in the first place. So this is especially helpful for anything that's not in a vacuum sealed container and anything that is high up on the aromatic level <laughs> for insects like sugar. So they are super attracted to sugar and anything sweet that's gonna be um, this could even include dried fruits. So for the bay leaves, what I do is I will, I will put, I, I mostly use these for five gallon buckets because if a container is in a glass container, I'm gonna choose to vacuum seal it and then I don't have to worry about this. Um, but for my five, five gallon bucket storage in particular, I will put sprinkled bay leaves on top of the food directly inside the bucket. And then I'm gonna set the bucket in storage and set bay leaves on top of the bucket's lid so that uh, it can be smelling on the outside so that hopefully they'll never even make it to the inside. We have a video on how to store, properly store sugar to keep the pest away that really goes into detail on this, and I'll link that above. Last but not least, number four is diatomaceous earth. So diatomaceous earth is basically powdered fossilized shells, the exoskeletons, and under a microscope, you will see that they are a very jagged picture of broken glass, broken shards of glass where it's just like razor sharp points all over. And to us, we don't feel that and don't get harmed by that or anything like that. But insects that have soft bodies, when they walk over it, it slices them 
kind of graphic, but it kills them. So this is good for anything that is bulky and not powdered because you want to rinse this off before you use it. So for instance, I will use this in my, we store two five gallon buckets of two types of pasta and I will sprinkle this in that five gallon bucket. And the reason why is because the pasta is big it's not powdered. For instance, I wouldn't mix this into flour. You can't easily separate that. I wouldn't mix this into, oh, what's something else? Instant potato flakes, because you can't separate that. But pasta, large size, can easily be put into a strainer and ran under cold water right before you use it and get that diatomaceous earth washed off. One word of caution with diatomaceous earth is that you don't want to breathe it in because it is jagged and it can irritate the lungs. So when you are Pouring it into your foods, you can either wear a mask or, you know, turn your head or just don't inhale a whole lot because you don't want to inhale this powder. Okay, y'all, four ways to prevent pests in your food storage. If you are new to food storage, we actually have a free one-year food storage plan uh, that you can print out and follow to help you gather food for a one-year food storage. We will link that in the description box below. Uh, we hope you give it a try. I hope it's helpful to y'all. See y'all next time. Bye.